Streamlit 1.18 is out, and it's the biggest release in a while. It releases the official separation of the ST cache decorator into two distinct ones. The cache data for computations like data frame transformations or querying the OpenAI APIs over and over and over again with the same input. And the cache resource to share a single resource between multiple sessions like a hanging fixed model or a database connection to Google Firestore. ST columns finally support nested columns, hmm. at least at one level. You can put lots of horizontally aligned metrics and sliders in different columns, it gets you pretty cool looking grid-like layouts. ST Progress now adds a message to the progress to occupy the viewer while waiting for a computation to finish. ST Button accepts the Use Container with parameter to stretch buttons across the full container or page width. Python 3.11 formally works with Streamlit and soon will be available in Streamlit Cloud. You can finally print a Streamlit app as a PDF from the hamburger menu and send that to your manager. Or check out this video to deploy your app as an executable. And my favorite new feature, files in the static folder are served by the application at the given URL, provided you activate it in the configuration settings. For now, it works well for images and text only. I would have loved to serve static videos personally, and I think there are some limits, like you cannot serve too many small files or files that are bigger than a gigabyte. For those of you doing Google Cloud Platform deployments on App Engine or Cloud Run, all endpoints like Helps or Stream were renamed to avoid clashing. For example, Stream was renamed to ST Core slash Stream, and that may be blocking your future deployments. Streamlit 1.19 released last week with a brand new editable data frame feature, thus transforming your Streamlit data frame into an actual Excel spreadsheet. Like, like for real. Anytime you edit a cell, the edited data frame is sent back into your Python script so you can work with the edited data during the session. You can copy and paste into cells, access only the edited data through the session state key link to the editor, select and edit multiple cells at once through keyboard shortcuts, or even add and delete rose from the editor. Now that the streaming bit is out of the way, I can freely chat with you about the future of this channel. To be honest with you, I didn't have enough time to play with the streaming release and come up with a meaningful tutorial and content about advanced consequences from this release. Life kinda got in the way. I had a knee injury in a badminton competition, so I couldn't make it to PyCon France, and that, along other matters, everything kinda cluttered my mind. Then I had to film and edit videos for our Lyon Data Science Meetup. And by the way, if you're in Lyon or France and want to come talk about a data science or MLOP subject, just ping me, I may be your video editor for the talk. But in all this mess, I did something cool. I tried to do the Hugging Face course in a day. I was confident in the beginning because the first chapters of the Hugging Face course are very approachable. You're like, you're running a chatbot pipeline in a matter of an hour and you just feel like a Yeah, I'm an NLP expert. But the later chapters about custom data sets and tokenizers and advanced NLP tasks, mind you, they're very interesting, but they're very dense in information. You cannot speed run them in a day. <laughs> also, my PyTorch was really rusty. I didn't do PyTorch for three to four years. So whenever he talked about do doing that model training and evaluation loop in Vanilla PyTorch, this forward to backwards propagation, optimization and loss, there are things that I needed to go back and forth between the PyTorch and the Hugging Face course to remember and refresh my mind about PyTorch. So yeah, it was a really insightful course. If you're into Transformers and NLP, if you later want to dive into ChatGPT and large language models, then I definitely recommend this course. Just don't do it in a day <laughs> like I did, except if you're very good in PyTorch and you already know a bit of NLP, but in other cases, 
refresh your mind in PyTorch before going into this course, especially in the later chapters. After that Hugging Face NLP courses, I felt ready to go and research ChatGPT and instruct GPT, large language models, and where it's all going. I wanted to have a a deeper technical understanding of those models. I didn't want to rely off on the overwhelming <laughs> number of new videos on YouTube talk talking about ChatGPT. You've got the ChatGPT channels going, growing to a, a million subscribers and you've got those AI influencers explaining you the 10 best prompts to get the best script and thumbnail for your future <laughs> YouTube video. I didn't want to rely on that and it also got me thinking why don't I do 5 ChatGPT StreamLit videos to grow to a million subscribers, right? Why don't I do that? <laughs> but I won't. At least not right now. My vision for this channel since the beginning has been to inspire you and empower you to build the best data web apps you can to share your knowledge and impact people's minds and hearts. That's why most of the tutorials I do, they're not about just a talking head of me over a coding screencast. I I put a lot of cinematic feeling, sound design, b-rolls, because I, I want to make you feel that you can do it. I want to make you pumped to share your knowledge and to learn more of this knowledge and to impact people's lives. That's, it takes me a lot of time, but ultimately, that's what I want to do. Uh, do tell me in the comments, by the way, if that's what you like in my videos, because we as creators, we are not really good judges of our own content. AI is important for me. I've been working in data science for the last 10 years, so it's a topic I hold dearly in my heart, and I feel like AI will have a strong impact on our society. So my role here is to empower you to build the best data web apps with AI features, with a positive impact on our world. Yeah, that's just to say that you're not getting full AI PyTorch TensorFlow courses from me. Anyway, I'm currently scripting the next epic tutorial video, like the StreamLit one, but on not really on StreamLit this time. It may not be out in two weeks because it's a big one, so maybe in three weeks. Don't worry if you don't get new videos from me in the meantime, I'm heavily investing into this next video. In the meantime, I'll be hanging on Twitter if you need some news or posting, I'll try to post some news on the YouTube community tab or on Instagram. Uh, I should post more there and I'll see you around. Bye.